Hi guys, welcome back to another Matchbox Garage video. I'm Rob, and today I'm going to attempt to take this 1985 old Volvo from shabby to shiny. Now these cars, I think they call it the Turbo Brick, because they go very fast, but they're just very square, like an old house brick. But anyway, we'll take out the uh, the rivets, drill down the center of the post, remove the flange, and tap the hole. Just a single hole on this one. Of course, remember your lubrication. You don't want to snap your piece in that hole. And uh, whilst using my very handy vice. So it rolls pretty well, this one, considering it's shaped like a house brick. But just a, you know, such a distinctive design, this Volvo. Um, I think it's almost one of the ugliest cars ever made. But because of that, I love it. It's it's one of those ones where it's like an ugly duckling, you know. It's uh, it's you know, it's not going to win any uh, prizes for the beauty pageant, but they're rock solid, great cars, um, reliable, and you know just a great family car. But it reads underneath here, 1986. So it's 1986 Matchbox International Limited. So it's a Volvo 760. So we take off the screw as I have already pre-drilled this one and actually as you can see it's the bumper the front bumper there just holding it on which I quite like that little design and I haven't taken this apart yet so we can all check it out together to see what we're playing with now the wheels come out nice and easy and today there is going to be a pretty sexy wheel swap so I like that kind of little retainer piece it makes the wheel swaps so much easier nice simple interior black you can see how comfortable those seats are just by a little tiny plastic model I'm not going to do anything with this interior today just give it a bit of a buff up I quite like it in black just as it is window glass there pops out nice and easy thankfully no scratches no cracks so a bit of a buff up and a pledge treatment get that looking good as new and of course the main casting with this retainer little clip here I never put that in the paint stripping solution I don't want it to dissolve away Obviously, we've got the opening doors here. Not too much um, detail on the doors here. Pretty much just has the uh, serial number there. But let's get these all, all these pieces now into the uh, solution. So we've got it into some boiling water. So I had a couple of teaspoons of caustic soda. And if you are going to do this, just remember your eye protection and ventilation and gloves. Pretty nasty stuff, this. But just after a couple of minutes, rinse it down the drain, and this is what we're left with. So you've got this kind of oxidization over the whole cast in here but you know you can see all the details now there's no paint remaining or just a little bit there but what 99% has gone there I always find these bases put up a bit more of a fight but to be honest you know, once I get my uh, fake Dremel with the wire wheel piece on there it flicks off no problem So I'm just going to switch this out now and get buffing it up. So just a few minutes later, looking good as new. And I've got these little uh, pin files 
and I've been going around but I wanted to show you this one in particular you can see there some of that kind of casting defect around these windows and considering we put you know perhaps four or five hours into these cars it's worth spending that extra 30 seconds just to get this nice and straight and I think if you skip that part really then I don't know maybe you're a fool but I use the Tamiya uh, fine I'm using the light grey here no real reason at this stage I've got the light grey and I've got the white my white is coming a little bit thin on the ground so I thought I'd just start using up this uh, light grey because it's an opening door model I'll put the doors in position and then just open them up trying to get all the uh, door shuts and so on under the doors put that to side uh, to what you know to dry and then I'll turn my attention to the base and I'm using this which is basically what I consider you know, like a base paint instead of using my airbrush and getting it dirty in between the colors I just simply use this give it a little single blast nice and easy job done put that to one side and that's ready to go on to the car uh, you know, the following day and then with that to one side the door shuts have dried close up the doors and then I can start attacking the rest of the car so you can see there just paying particular attention to the wheel arches underneath to make sure everything is uh, you know nicely covered and I'll just go over as you know, ultimately one single pretty thick coat there and you should be able to see shining in the light beautiful so we'll turn our attention now to the plastic so you've got the windscreen there and the interior and then out pops the interior looking good as new so nothing further on that put that to one side and now that the glass is clean I'm just going to give it a little bit of a buff up with some simple car polish uh, before I go with the pledge now that the body of the car is dry I went with um, like a red you know almost kind of I guess factory color um, I don't have any ratios but if I was to guess it's probably nine to one as in nine parts red one part brown and I, to be honest I really like this color and I think it really suits this car now I did do a two to one ratio with the um, Tamiya thinners I think I probably could have done a little bit more maybe like a 60-40 uh, mix it was on the it was you know it was fine and it's given me a great finish and it is a glossy finish without using any lacquer but I just think if I just had it a little bit thinner perhaps it would have come out that little bit smoother so again with the doors open I'm just trying to get in do all the door shuts under the door edge of the door etc places that I'm going to miss with the doors closed and this stuff dries pretty quick so probably 15-20 minutes later over the radiator just to accelerate the dry process and I can get on to painting the whole casting my airbrush actually you know it seems to be a little bit better than recently um, my father-in-law was uh, around who you know he's uh, well versed in these airbrushes and uh, very experienced and gave me a couple of hints and tips and pointers uh, a couple of little things that I've done since some lubrication within the needle uh, some basically some particular cleaner I'm just gonna reach for it now it's called brush magic and considering I've got lots of different types of airbrush cleaners plus all the home remedies like 
window and glass kind of cleaners and all sorts of bits and pieces but this brush magic um, by a company called Deluxe Materials it's hardcore hardcore stuff it's certainly not cheap but yeah if you've got any paint uh, I'm told that even a drop you know a dried on paintbrush that'll get it like uh, brand new again so um, yeah that's really cleaned up my airbrush that so yeah it feels like it's brand new again so you can see here I've gone on to be honest um, time is against me at the moment well I say time is against me um, I've just I'm back down to the, t the same kind of time that everybody else has got um, I've gone from probably for about five or so weeks acting like a, a full-time youtuber um, back to you know the daily grind with a full-time job and of course just having you know the odd hour or two in the evenings uh, to get on with my little restorations here so paint wise today I just got it on kind of you know good solid thick coat and I think you'll agree that's pretty shiny and I'm pretty happy with that so it's probably it's been 24 hours to cure sat over the radiator so it's basically cooked on and then I appear to have dropped the footage of me dropping this into some pledge but believe me that's what I did the interior there and then I've kind of hidden the wheels here uh, a little bit for the uh, final reveal but like I say these are aftermarket wheels and uh, these old junkers they're not going on so oh what I will be doing is obviously adding a few little details the lights etc so as a little reminder of what she looked like and the result so as you can see there front lights front indicators front grill front registration uh, side markers rear lights obviously most striking there the wheels rear rear number plate there painted in the uh, the reed details in the uh, the Volvo signage but those wheels don't they make a difference absolute beauties but anyway guys, just want to take this opportunity to thank my Patreons. And thank you guys for watching and hopefully you'll stick around for the next one.